our next step in making our um, kind of presentation for our vice is to make an explosion view of it. This is a view that shows each part by itself um, kind of broken off from the other parts. So we need to create a new file to be able to do this. So we're going to go up to New here and click the little drop down next to it and go down to Presentation. So our new presentation, there's very few options here for us to work with. Uh, we're first going to start with the only option we can, which is Create View. And we want to make sure that we have our assembly loaded here. So it says vice.iam. If it doesn't say .iam, Let's click open an existing file, find your vice, and open that. So here's mine. And we don't want to do anything else, just click OK, and there's our vice. So now we need to start pulling our components off of our vice and kind of keeping them away from each other. And this can get fairly difficult, especially with a thing like this that has so many parts. Because um, we want to make it so that every single part has its own space around it and nothing's lying on top of anything else. So we're going to start. Um, let's go ahead and start kind of in this back area here. We'll pull off these handle knobs. We'll pull the handle rod out. And then we'll pull the uh, screw out of that as well. Then we'll go in, work on this area here. And then lastly, we'll work on our jaw. So to do this, we're going to click on Tweak Components. And the very first thing I want to do is select a component to move. So I'm going to select this, um, this handle knob down here. So I'm going to just click on it anywhere. And you can see we have our X, Y, and Z axes. And Z is blue. That means it can move right now. Now, here's where it can get kind of difficult. See how anything I move over has a red highlight to it? We want to make sure only to click on the thing we want to move. If I accidentally click on the handle rod here, this will move as well. So I want to click on here. Now I want it, and see how it goes blue? I want it to move in the z-axis. I want it to pull away from it. So I'm going to just click on it and drag, and there it goes. Now I want it to then move up and away. So that's in the y-axis. I can click on the y arrow, see how it turns blue, and I can then move it away. Now, I'm done with that. I don't want to move anymore, so I'm going to click Clear. And let's do it again with this one. So I'm going to go up here, click on the um, handle knob over here, click on it again to make it have a blue outline, make sure not to click on anything else, and I moved it in the wrong way. I wanted to pull away first and then go down. So I'm going to X out of this, click Undo up here, and let's try it again. Click on it, click on it, and my Z is blue, so I'm going to click. Oh, and when I did that, it switched to my X axis. Let's try it again. This can get kind of nitpicky sometimes. All right, I can click also on the arrow and drag that. So I'm going to just do that. And now I want to move down and away. So I'm going to click on my Y arrow. And find a spot where I can't click on anything else. That's getting kind of difficult. Oh, and see what happens if I accidentally click on something else. I also then move the jaw. Let's undo that. I'm going to undo again and start from scratch yet again. Oh, forgot to select the actual component this time. Uh, this can get very annoying sometimes. So, you know, we're going to do something a little differently. I'm going to pull my handle rod out and get that out of the way, and then that allows me to move this in any direction I want. I'm going to just leave that right there. Um, so I'm going to click Clear. And now there's nothing keeping me from just moving this in the x-axis and then in the y-axis out of the way.
so it's down out of the way. Click clear, and let's select our screw now, and move that back. And it can just stay right there, that's perfectly fine. Um, actually, we're going to pull that in a little bit. Let's go right there. So I picked there as a stop point because I have space around it. I wouldn't want to go further where it's overlapping on my body. Uh, we just want to have a little bit of space there. All right, so what should we do next? Let's do this plate back here. So these screws need to come out. I'm going to click on them, and I'm going to select both of my screws. And then I'm going to drag them out. Oops, and again, I accidentally selected Y. So I'm going to undo and go ahead and try it again. Let's click on the arrow so it pulls right out. And I can't select it, so I can also type in the distance. Let's try like five. There we go. And that moved it up out of the way. So that works. Um, and then I'm going to push them back then too, kind of get them further out of the way. All right, let's do it to our jaw plate here then. And there we go. So now all we're left with is here. So let's pull these off just as we did before. I want to move in the Y, and I'm going to, oh, I can select it. Pull those up, and then I'm going to have them go off to the side now. Now we're going to have to pick one view, so I usually do our home view as it, and I want to make sure nothing overlaps anything else. So right now my screws overlap, or my um, jaw plates overlapping my screw. So I'm then going to pull that down a little bit and go over a little bit, and now that's out of the way. There's nothing overlapping anything else. All right, let's keep going. We're going to pull our retaining ring out now. And see, I can't select it, so I'm going to try again, like, three inches. Oh, and I wanted to go the other way, so I'm going to undo that. Tweak it again. And let's check our home view, make sure it doesn't overlap with anything. It doesn't. It's clear out there. All right, let's pull our keys out. We're going to pull them straight out here. And instead of trying to get that, I'm going to just type in the distance. It wasn't three. Uh, let's try six. Nope. Need a little bit more. Let's try ten. There we go. That works right there. Um, actually, it might be a little bit too much. Let's try eight. Yeah, there we go. All right, and then we're left with our base. Or sorry, our jaw. So I'm going to go up and then over right there. And that's it. Now, yeah, there's some set screws left. There's little set screws there and there. Um, and then there's the two little hovering ones there. I guess I should get those as well. Let's have those come out the bottom. So I'm going to go, oh, and I did, forgot to select them. Make sure we got that one and that one. And let's go negative three to have them go straight down. Check our home view. 
and then I'm going to have them come out, so I'm going to go Y, and let's try 3 also. There we go, that works. And then we got these two little ones kind of dangling in space right now. I'm going to just have those go up a bit. Go up, and then let's have them go over. There we go. Now, if I go to my home view, I can look. Nothing is overlapping anything else. Now, I have all these blue lines. That's perfectly fine. We could just leave those there. So I'm going to click Close. And now, one of the cool things about this is if I click Animate, I can change my interval. That's how much time. So let's say 20 seconds. Apply. And I can then hit Play Forward. And if you see, my components over the course of 20 seconds will all move into place. And there we go. It animates it coming apart, and we can reset that. And I can even have it do like 20 times. Let's say we did it over one second. So each part takes one time, and we do it four times. It does very, very fast, and it does it multiple times. Um, so you can kind of have some fun with this. But let's set our interval to, say, 10 seconds, one repetition, apply, and you can then record this. So I'm going to click Record and save it where our vice is. We can name it uh, Vice Explosion. Keep that all the same. Click OK. And click Play. Move your mouse out of the way. It shouldn't matter, but um, you can just watch it. And it's recording right now. That's why the screen is gone. So it doesn't record that the record screen at the same time. And there we go. Now it's done recording, so it's going to come back. Let's click Reset, close this, and now you have that animation saved. And you have your explosion view done for the next step of our presentations um, here. So let's go ahead and click Save. And we can name this Vice Explosion. And then we are done.